So now that we have placed our four points on our circle and we know where we're going, we need to talk about what we want it to look like. So I want to add flexion. Flexion is the movement of the pole through to the nose from side to side. I ask riders how they organize their horse on a circle. And we're going to talk right circle. And I usually hear all sorts of different answers. The most common answer is you want to see the back one third of the eyelashes of the horse's right eye. Okay, so people are trying to get bend through the neck and shape to their circle by seeing the eye. The eye to me is very hard to measure. It's not a formula. Horses have different eyes, different eye placements. Some are more in their heads, some stick out more. The eye is also very hard to see. Riders start to have posture that looks like this a little bit because they're trying to see how much of the eye they have shaped into their circle. So the formula that I've derived and I find it works really well is I want to have the center of his chin in front of the point of his scapula on a right circle. So if I draw an imaginary line, it's going to come out and it's going to hit the center of his chin. So as I'm riding, I can take my eyes and I can look down and I can see that nice straight line and then my eyes can go back up onto my point rather than trying to curl around and see how much of the eye that I have in my shape. The important thing to think about when we talk about flexion is to not hold our horse. So if we get that flexion with our direct rein, our right rein, so I move his chin, I need to give back on my rein just slightly. So there's breath in my rein. You can see there's a little bit of movement in my rein. What I find is riders will place the flexion and then hold the flexion. I want this horse to have the choice to leave that frame or stay. If he chooses to leave, I will correct him and then I will leave him alone again. Horses that are always held don't have a choice and they rely on us to hold them and show them what we want them to do. But I really want him to know that on a right circle, in this case, that this is how we organize this flexion and we progress our training and he starts to hold that flexion longer and longer. So to start, if I move that chin into right flexion, I might have to fix him every stride or two because he's not used to organizing himself in that manner. But if I'm consistent with that correction, what happens is I then get four strides where he stays in right flexion and I correct him if he leaves and then I'll get eight strides and 10 strides and then it builds and I get whole circles, but it's consistent and it's knowing the correction and being on time when we need to make the correction. That flexion stems from our, um, our frame, how we hold our reins, how we make our correction. So when I want him to flex more to the right and give off this right rein, I need to put a little pressure on my right rein. And when he gives, I give back a little bit. Now, if I ask for that flexion and he wants to lean on my rein, I have to turn the volume up on my my ask and I want him to respond to a nice light ask and then I can leave him alone. That's how we develop soft responsive horses that are quick to our aids. So as I go out onto my circle, I want to think about flexion now. So I know my points, so I'm just going over point one. Ask him to walk a little bit more. Okay, I want him now to stay in right flexion. So you can see there's a little bit of breath in my right rein. My left rein, I want to talk about it. I want to fill my left rein up with his left shoulder. So that's done by my inside legs. So we've talked about this a lot, inside leg to outside rein. So my inside leg is pushing his shoulders to fill up my left rein. My right rein contains his flexion. So when I look down, see so there he left, I'm gonna correct him. 
When I look down, I can see the point of the scapula to the center of his chin. And then my eyes can come back up on my points. So he has the choice to leave or stay. If my inside rein is too long, I'll do it as an example. If he goes to go, see he automatically goes to left flexion. I can't make that correction soon enough. So I need to have my rein set to where he goes to leave that right flexion and I can make the correction before he gets too far off my circle. Right hand is gonna come back just outside your hip a little bit. Left rein is gonna stay right outside that hip. So the left rein is very stationary because that's where we're gonna send the shoulder. The right rein is what's gonna move that chin and soften the jaw. And if she speeds up when you add leg, that's, that's okay, just try and relax. There you go. So she can have a little bit more flexion. So use that right rein outside your hip pocket. There. She's really behind the vertical. Lift up, just slowly lift up with one rein, Haley. You have to trust her to stay here. So what you're doing is you're holding her a little bit. I think give a little bit more rain back to her. Keep that bend in your elbow just a little. Right there. There, that's good. Okay, so don't worry about behind the vertical a little bit. Let's. Let's just work on this. Okay, so really think about right rein. We're gonna ask that chin to come in front of that right scapula. Keep both legs on, driving her forward. If she leans on your inside leg, you're gonna support with the inside leg and make sure that shoulder does not come in and it goes to your outside rein. It's hard because you don't trust her to stay there. That's the trouble. You have to give her the opportunity to make the decision. And we want them to stay there so bad, so we hold them. There you go. Okay, now really just very gently think right rein just a little bit. Keep that left rein nice and steady. Right rein's gonna bring that chin. And then inside leg. A little bit more right rain, inside rain. Nice, there it is. Okay, one more of these, Haley. And then continue on past me and let's do the three circles again. Okay, pick her up a little bit behind the vertical. There you go, this is nice. Okay, where's her chin? Where's that flexion? Good, outside leg, eyes are on your points. Okay, right rein. She's not flexed properly. There you go, good correction. Point three, pick up your inside hand, please. Yeah. Okay, now on this straight line, keep your right flexion, right rein. Excellent job. After we execute drills, it's really important to have that moment of reflection and think about what did I feel? If I come back and I don't have that thought process and I don't think through what I just did, 
I find part of the learning process is lost. So one of my favorite questions is, what did you feel? What did you learn? What kind of information did you gather? Because that's how you're gonna take it and make it better next time you do it. So Haley, what are some things that you felt out there as you were going around your three circle drill? Well, number one, going around our first circle was kind of that tension. You feel her kind of tilt in the neck and uh, going kind of going back to that inside brain, kind of opening it up, kind of get that flexion of the chin. Also, the forwardness, kind of making sure she's continued to be forward, pushing that up into helping her. Let's address a couple points out of what you said. So number one is she has a lot of energy. So she's a forward horse, which I really like forward horses, as long as they're not too racy, because I can use that energy. But in our mind, we're thinking, we're going really fast. I need to slow her down. I need to get, you know, all these things done. But reality, there was two things you had to do. Hit your points and start to work on that right rein. That forwardness, you used it very well and you got going and you, you put her to work. Two was, you are talking about the right rein. I find it's very uncomfortable for people to use that inside rein um, a lot of corrections are made towards rider's belly buttons because I think they're trying to hold the horse in that position when really that's our legs job. So it's really quite uncomfortable for us to make that correction out here outside that hip bone. But once you start, you kind of go, oh, this feels good and it's working because as you went through your circles, number one was okay. Number two was good. Number three was pretty good. So as you went through it, you improved and you got more comfortable using that right rein. And your, your third circle looked really good. And again, it's the same correction, setting it up the same thing every time and making it that formula and recreating it for our horses training and mindset because that's how they like to think is A, B, C, D, they're very methodical.